Welcome back to the Explanation Pro. Today I'll recap a drama history film called, Interview. Spoilers incoming. The movie begins with a little girl singing from the huge stage facing the crowd. Smoke begins to spread at the back of the stage followed by a nuke launch up to the sky. The event was held in North Korea and quickly spreads all over the news. Despite all the news, the late night show called, Skylark Tonight, has never been interrupted. Late night show host named Dave Skylark started to introduce his guest Eminem through his biography and a new album which has been mired in controversy concerning lyrics. Dave reads a few lines from the lyrics. During the discussion about the lyrics, Eminem says he's gay that he never mentioned before. Everyone looks confused about what they've heard. Dave tries to clarify what it means. Eminem confirms he likes men. It's the first time in history Eminem confirms that he's gay and happened during Skylark Tonight's show that is why everyone is surprised and celebrated. The show has ended and they continued the celebration with his producer and best friend Aaron. The next guest from the late night show Rob Lowe reveals that he's bald after removing his wig. Dave says he looks barely different and asked if Rob would like to say anything for those who are currently watching. Suddenly the show got interrupted with breaking news related to what's happening in North Korea. Aaron looks very upset about what happened. While having a conversation with Dave, Aaron thinks of doing something different than their usual late night talks. Dave looks very excited while reading an article about Kim Jong Un. He let him read the article regarding Kim Jong Un's favorite show which includes Skylark tonight. Aaron doesn't look satisfied knowing that Kim Jong Un is the most reclusive leader on the planet. Dave is very positive that he can conduct this interview. Eventually, Aaron sent a message inviting the Supreme Leader as a guest for their late night show. While traveling, Aaron received a call from someone who sounds like using an Asian accent. At first, he thought it was Dave pretending to be someone else. The caller says he's trying to reach Aaron Ripaport after receiving the invitation. Aaron confirms that the caller is currently speaking to the right person. The caller introduces himself that he's from the office of Suk Yin Park, Secretary of Communications with the Democratic People's Republic of North Korea. Aaron apologized for the way he acted earlier. The caller discusses the meeting between the Supreme Leader and Dave Skylark as well as the location to discuss the matter personally. They will meet 50 kilometers west of Dandong, northeastern China. Aaron immediately booked a flight on his way to the location, arrived at the airport, met several people along the way, ride a train and walk through the mountains. Aaron arrives at the location. Due to a very long journey and exhaustion, he falls asleep. Eventually, the helicopter carrying several soldiers has landed at the location. The soldiers pointed their rifles at him and check if there were any signs of threat around him. Terms are non-negotiable and give him 24 hours to decide. Aaron told them that they should have said it over the phone or Skype instead. Suk Yin didn't bother to answer all his questions and leave him with a small bottle of water when the helicopter flew away so quickly. Aaron returned to the office and share everything happened. Skylark Tonight continues. Dave introduced another guest to his show, Joe Gordon. During the show, Dave has a very special announcement that he's very honored and humbled to conduct the first globally broadcast interview with the Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un. This leads to several reactions all over the news. The same night, they invited some company to go and have a party with them. The next morning, Aaron wakes up from someone who keeps knocking at the door. Agent Lacey introduced herself along with her partner Agent Botwin who works with CIA. Dave wakes up and still got some hangover from last night's party. Agent Lacey takes off her blazer and starts to discuss Kim Jong-un and what he's as capable of. Dave and Aaron seem out of focus listening to Agent Lacey. Agent Lacey explains the situation and they can use the show to terminate Kim Jong-un with their help. They continue the discussion at the CIA headquarters. Agent Lacey prepares a presentation about their mission. They will have to shake his hand administering a fatal dose of poison with a transdermal time delayed ricin strip. The poison will be absorbed into Kim Jong-un's skin and it metabolizes for 12 hours. No one will know about the plan and no tell all if the mission succeeds. Agent Lacey instructed them how to use the ricin strip. Dave put the ricin strip on his hand to test and shake someone's hand. He accidentally applies the ricin strip to his face when he sneezes. He trembles and asks what will happen to him. Agent Lacey replies he'll be dead. CIA provides a bag for them to use to keep the ricin strip undetected and a pair of watches for them to use for communicating. Dave doesn't like the design of the bag and calls it douchebag. 
Agent Lacey reminds them that they will be entering into the most dangerous and unpredictable country on earth and that Kim Jong-un is a master manipulator where his people revere him as a god that doesn't pee and poo. Dave didn't bring the bag CIA provided on their way out of the headquarters but instead, he used a different bag he likes. Aaron raised his voice and asked him where did he place the ricin strip. Dave put it in a pack of gum so no one will ever find it. A welcome presentation awaits when they arrived in North Korea and came across with Suk Yin. Dave leaves a short speech and transferred to a car. Out of curiosity, Dave asks if everyone in their country is starving to death. Suk Yin says that it's just a common misconception and asks them to look around. There's a fat kid in front of the grocery store waving at him. Dave also asks if the supreme leader does urinate and defecates. Suk Yin replies that the supreme leader works very hard that can burn the energy from the inside. They arrived at Kim Jong-un's personal compound and met Officer Ko and Yu who are the head of security. They've been with Kim Jong-un since he was a kid. Before they enter, they found a pack of gum when checking their belongings. Dave says it's just gum so the officer chews it. Officer Ko says it has no taste and he spits it out. They started to worry if he feels anything unusual. The officers escorted them to their rooms. When they left, they started to contact the command center about what happened. Agent Lacey immediately requests a replacement and dispatched the ricin strip through a capsule. She asks Aaron to pick up the capsule outside the compound. He looks so scared. It's too dark outside and they might get caught. Dave cherishes their moments together like he's gonna die and will never drop Aaron and yet, Aaron fell from the window. Aaron begins to crawl but suddenly they found out that a tiger coming. Dave communicates with Aaron and says the tiger can't see him. Agent Lacey informed them it has a night vision. They started to panic. The CIA ended up killing the tiger. Aaron picks up the capsule but suddenly, a group of soldiers finds him outside the compound. Before they get too close and finds out about what he's doing, Aaron is left with no choice but to hide the capsule in his poo hole. Dave suggests using the tiger blood that can lubricate when inserting the capsule. They escorted him back to his room, tore his clothes, and searched the entire room but they didn't find anything. He removes the capsule when they left and shows how big it is to Dave. Kim Jong-un beans to knock into their room to meet Dave and gave him a present. He invited Dave for a tour of his home. He show all his expensive vehicles and a huge tank. They went inside the tank. Dave begins to wander to some stuff inside the tank and plays Firework by Katy Perry. Kim Jong-un says his wife left the tape there. Kim Jong-un asks if margaritas are gay and Dave replies margaritas are great. Suk Yin who's in charge of the transmission shows the control room to Aaron while Dave and Kim Jong-un are having fun operating the tank. The tour continues. Dave and Kim Jong-un took a break and drink margaritas after playing basketball. Dave takes his chance to ask Kim Jong-un if he does pee and does even have a poo hole. Kim Jong-un confirms he pees and poos. He does have a poo hole as well that's working overtime. Dave also asks if it is his dad who says margaritas are gay. So Kim Jong-un invited a pack of women to come over and have fun with them. Dave returns into his room and started to think twice about their mission. Aaron reminds him that Kim Jong-un is just manipulating him. The officers came into their room and invited them to the banquet hall. They check up again about Officer Ko's condition before he leaves. Officer Yu tells them not to ask any more questions to make them think something suspicious about the two. A small presentation from the three kids playing an instrument awaits at the banquet hall. Everyone is watching. Aaron and Dave notice that Officer Ko is acting so strange and sweating from his chair. His body fell to the floor and begins to shake. He still manages to take his gun. It catches the attention of everyone. Officer Yu rush himself to check Officer Ko but he pulls the trigger and shoots Officer Yun in his head. Officer Ko dies as well after being poisoned. Kim Jong-un went into the dead bodies and cried so loud about what happened. The next day, Dave and Aaron argue not to continue their mission after the incident last night. A soldier arrives and informs Dave that the supreme leader needs his presence. Dave comforts Kim Jong-un when they return to their room. Aaron from a distance introduced himself to Kim Jong-un as they never got the chance to meet and would love to shake his hand. Dave stops Aaron when they're about to shake their hands and says that he's a Jew. They swear to each other before they got separated. Suddenly Suk Yin arrives and would like to talk about reviewing some data for tomorrow's interview. Aaron didn't get the chance to remove the ricin strip into his hand. In the middle of the conversation, Aaron asks if she has a boyfriend. Suk Yin resists answering the question but eventually, she admitted that she was attracted to Aaron and started kissing him. 
In the other room, the Supreme Leader pays his tribute to his loyal officers Ko and Yu. Dave had to leave the room when Kim Jong-un became furious. He started to wander outside the compound. He went to one of the grocery stores and discovered everything was fake. He went mad when he realized Kim Jong-un had been lying to him the whole time. Suk Yin wonders why they aren't naked yet so she takes off Aaron's clothes. Suk Yin says he's so hairy and looks like a bear and that his chest is so pink. Aaron still has the ricin strip in his hand so he uses his American teeth instead to take off their clothes. Suk Yin looks bothered and suddenly stops. She reveals the wrongdoings of the supreme leader. Suk Yin hides when Dave steps into their room. Dave asks if Aaron still have the poison so they can continue their mission. Suk Yin uncover herself when she heard the conversation and Aaron defended her that she was on their side. They can't just kill the supreme leader cuz he can be replaced by another leader. Suk Yin comes up with a plan to reveal Kim Jong-un's lies so that his people will know he's not a god through an interview tomorrow. The historic and most awaited Skylark Tonight Show comes. Kim Jong-un prepares and sends another present to Dave before the interview. Kim Jong-un beans to talk about the misunderstanding about North Korea. Everything aligns the way as planned reading all the questions supplied by Kim Jong-un. Then Dave asks if his people should be rewarded for their resilience and strength. Kim Jong-un responds, of course. So Dave asks a follow-up question, why don't you feed them? Kim Jong-un stops for a while. Dave repeat his question and added that two-thirds of his people are hungry and that they're spending $800 million for nukes every year instead of feeding his people. Kim Jong-un brought up that they have plenty of food which Dave has seen. Dave clarifies that what he saw is a fake grocery store with a fake fat kid planted in front of it. Meanwhile, in the control room, Suk Yin informed the staff to keep their hands off the control. The Supreme Leader General is alarmed about the situation and immediately deploys all the soldiers to cut the show. One of the staff attempts to cut the show but he fails when Aaron stops him. Suk Yin remains to keep her gun pointed at those who will attempt to cut the show. While Aaron is being attacked by one of the staff, he advised Suk Yin to take over the controls to keep the show running. She locks the door when they notice someone arriving. Suddenly, a staff member attacks Aaron and bit his finger so he fights back and pushes him to a lever. Suk Yin shoots a staff member in his foot after attacking her and shoots another staff in the head before it kills Aaron. The interview continues. Kim Jong-un talks about Dave's wild allegations and that he has proven nothing and is not capable to conduct a real interview. Dave then says maybe he's right. He needs people's approval desperately since he never had it from his father since he was a kid. He also sees a lot of the same thing with Kim Jong-un and that margaritas are gay. Kim Jong-un keeps holding his tears. Dave proceeds with his final question and starts to sing the first line of Katy Perry's song, Firework, in a soft tone. Kim Jong-un can't hold his tears anymore. He cries like a baby when Dave sings the chorus part followed by the beat of Kim Jong-un's cry and pooed in his pant. Finally, his people already know that he's no god and that he does have a poo hole. The general and the soldiers arrived outside the control room red to shoot. Before they get in, Suk Yin takes a rifle and shoots all its bullets behind the door. The interview continues. Kim Jong-un thought Dave is his friend. Dave says he was a fake friend and just a flawed old man with a big poo hole which triggers Kim Jong-un to shoot him and left. Everyone who witnessed the interview is in shock. Suddenly, Dave stands up close to the camera to show that he's still alive and that he's wearing a bulletproof vest. Dave takes the dog with him and escapes immediately and gathers with Aaron and Suk Yin. Kim Jong-un receives the news that Dave Skylark is still alive so he decided to prepare the nukes for launch. The group went inside the tank to escape and they run over anything obstructing their way while playing Katy Perry's firework. Eventually, the mad Kim Jong-un is riding an armed helicopter to chase the group and started to shoot. The nukes are ready to launch and just waiting for their supreme leader signal. Before Kim Jong-un kills them, Dave aims his tank towards the helicopter loaded with shells. He fires the shell towards the helicopter that got Kim Jong-un killed. They shut off the nukes for launch as they didn't hear any signal from the supreme leader. Suk Yin shows their way out through a tunnel. She didn't come with them to ensure that the power won't be transferred to the wrong hands. Aaron kisses Suk Yin one last time before they leave. At the end of the tunnel, Agent Lacey already sends someone to help the group. When they returned, Aaron continues their communication with Suk Yin through Skype. The movie ends with Dave reading his tell-all. Thank you so much for watching.
If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.